Good morning, this is Dr. Desmond Wai from Desmond Wai Clinic. We are at the Mangi Novena Hospital as well as Fire Park Hospital. Today I want to talk about the frequently asked question as a hepatitis B carrier. So the, as a hepatitis B carrier, some people discover when they are very young, uh, some people discover when they are very old through health screening, and some unfortunate patients discover when they have a problem. For instance, recently I saw a 48-year-old gentleman He's a male, he's from China, uh, he work, he's working in Singapore. For some abdominal discomfort, some pain, he did a health screening and he was diagnosed with hepatitis B only at the age of 48. So there are patients that are, there are people that diagnose with hepatitis B at much later age, some that diagnose at earlier age. And when I have, I've seen about hundreds to thousands of them, uh, I, invariably they have the same worry, same concern and same similar questions. So let me share something with you that I almost routinely tell all my hepatitis B patients and you may find it uh, useful to you as well. Number one, uh, how do I get it? I told them that uh, hepatitis B is, can be transmitted horizontally by sexual intercourse, by blood transfusion, by organ transplant, by sharing of needles like dental needle, medical needle, tattoo, etc. Or by sex, vertical transmission. Or it can be by vertical transmission, like a cross. Oh, vertical transmission is from mother to child, not father to child, but mother to child. But I told them that uh, it's almost impossible to find out exactly how your happy is acquired. Generally speaking, in the Western world, in North America, in Europe, uh, in Western Europe, uh, the mode of transmission is by uh, sexual intercourse or blood uh, product transfusion. Whereas in Asia, like China, Singapore, Indonesia, Vietnam, most of them are transmitted by from mother to child, what we call vertical transmission. If a lady had hepatitis B, there's a possibility that uh, uh, she can pass to the child uh, while, uh, while uh, doing the process of childbirth. I have covered it in other videos that you can uh, find, find them and talk about them. So first, you can never know how you get your hepatitis B. Number two, I told them that they are not obliged to inform anybody else except the following people. They must tell me who is a doctor, because I need to manage them. They must tell the doctor they have hepatitis B, so we can take precautions, we can do the appropriate investigation management for them. They should also tell the spouse, because hepatitis B can be transmitted by sexual intercourse. So if someone has hepatitis B, his spouse should go and test for hepatitis B, because maybe the path passed to him, or maybe he has really passed to the spouse. And if the spouse is, the spouse should also be checked for hepatitis B immunity. If they don't have the antibody, they should go for the vaccination. Uh, go to any polyclinic, any family clinic, any hospital. Uh, most places in Singapore and most parts of the world will have the hepatitis B vaccination. Three injections, 016. So the wife should go for uh, hepatitis B vaccination if not vaccinated. If they're vaccinated, protected, then I told them you can have sexual intercourse with your wife. You will not pass to her because now she has the antibody. And the father doesn't pass to the child. Father passes to the mother first and mother passes to the child. So as a father, if your wife is protected, your children will not get it from you. I then tell them that uh, what are the occupations that they can do and they cannot do. I tell them that they can do any occupation, they, will, they can do most of the occupation that I can do, okay? Except occupation that involve blood. For example, they may not want to be a professional MMA wrestler, a professional Thai boxer that you know when you fight there's blood or that we watch all this on YouTube all the fights. They in Singapore they can be a doctor, uh, maybe like a gastroenterologist or radiologist or physician, but perhaps they shouldn't be a doctor that involves a lot of blood, such as a surgeon, a trauma surgeon, because we what we do not want to have is that if I as a doctor if I have a sore in my in my hand, the blood seep out, the blood may have the virus. Uh, and the virus transmit to another patient through the open wound. So if you are a surgeon, it may not be a good idea to be a doctor. Okay, in some other countries, uh, hepatitis B carrier can be a doctor provided their E antigen is negative or, or provided the hepatitis B viral load is low. So different countries have different, uh, have different kind of uh, uh, rules. In Singapore, old, old days, 20, 30 years ago, a happy carrier cannot be a doctor. When I become a doctor, they tested me for hepatitis B service antigen. Mine was negative and so is all my so so is all my other classmates and hence we can be enrolled in the medical school. But now if you have hepatitis B, you can still do medicine in Singapore. It's just that when you choose your career, you you should choose those that 
uh, maybe more like physician than myself rather than a procedurist, a surgeon. So you can do anything I like. Certainly, happy carer can be a teacher, can be a lawyer, can be a accountant, can be a judge, can be a prime minister. They can be, they can do anything that most of the things that I can do except things that contain blood. So job wise is okay. I told them that they shouldn't smoke, they shouldn't drink alcohol consistently because excessive drinking and uh, smoking increase the risk of uh, liver cancer. If you are a really happy carrier and you add extra stress to you, then that may not be a good idea. That may increase the risk of liver cancer for you. As a happy carrier, they should keep their body slim. They shouldn't be fat because we know that fat per people can have fatty liver and being fat, being overweight, they can have a high risk of many cancers, including liver cancer. If you are a happy carrier with a uh, fatty liver, the risk, of, the risk of liver cancer may increase. So you should not, you should keep your body weight down, keep it normal, exercise regularly, don't eat so much sweet thing, eat less carbohydrate, watch your weight, uh, keep, keep your body mass index uh, within a reasonable limit. Uh, other than that, I told them that uh, you don't have to tell your best friend, you don't have to tell your boss, you don't have to tell your colleague that you have hepatitis B because you will not pass to your colleague, you cannot pass to your boss, you cannot pass to your best friend, you will meet them to play ping pong ball and to eat together. So you will not pass to them and so you don't have to tell to them, you don't have to tell them. If you want to tell them, tell your friend, tell your colleague you have hepatitis B, you can, of course it's a choice. But I have many uh, experience from patients that, you know, the colleague, once they know that this person has hepatitis B, they stop dining with them, they don't even shake their hand, uh, not to mention hugging or getting close. Because they think uh, hepatitis B are very infectious. I keep telling my patient, happy is transmitted by, uh, by sex and by, uh, uh, from birth. Normal casual contact as a doctor to patient, even if I hug my patient, and I don't hug my patient, but even if I hug my patient, I will not get it from them. So it's not very infectious, they don't have to be worried. But a lot of laymen, a lot of non-happy patients, non-happy people have the misperception that happy can be transmitted by, by just touching. So they don't touch them. So another thing that uh, I told my patient is that if, people, if you Google on the hepatitis B on Google, you say how is hepatitis B transmitted, they tell you the same thing, except that in Caucasian countries, in Western Europe, in North America, they tend to be transmitted more by sexual uh, causes, we believe, much less by vertical transmission because happy is uncommon. So if your colleague finds out that you have hepatitis B, sometimes the colleague may tend to judge you, misjudge you, uh, unfairly of course, the thing that you maybe you have been sleeping around and that's how we get a hepatitis B from, from your girlfriend or from your boyfriend. Uh, this is uncalled for, but I do have patients telling me that that's how the colleague don't look at them kind of thing. So to sum up, uh, as a hepatitis B carrier, you can live your life normally, you can get married, have kids, work a normal job, you can even be a doctor, just don't be a doctor that involves a lot of blood like a surgeon. You can do uh, what I do love to do. I like to uh, watch movie on YouTube. I love to run. I love to uh, uh, do pull up. I love to do exercise. Whatever I do, you can do. But perhaps you shouldn't be doing uh, kickboxing, Thai boxing, MMA kind of activity that there may be wound, there may be uh, blood involved. Uh, to sum up, as a happy person, you can live a normal life. Just avoid certain precautions. Uh, uh, and someone asked me, can you be a doctor? Certainly, be a doctor. Uh, nowadays, National University of Singapore Medical School accept happy career as a doctor. Just uh, they, they maybe it's just some restriction when you choose your career. So, Lee Bon, this is Dr. Desmond White. Thank you for listening.